In Martin Scorsese's The Irishman, team says President Jimmy Hoffa is constantly under fire by the government for his links with corruption and organised crime. Hoffa was subject to numerous court cases where he would be at risk of being sent to prison, and the man who he often chose to defend him, in addition to legendary lawyers like Edward Bennett Williams and Frank Rogano, was veteran mob lawyer Bill Buffalino. Buffalino was part of the legal team on numerous Hoffa cases, and it was partly due to his intelligence and cunning that Hoffa was acquitted of crimes so many times. Bill Buffalino is also thought to be a cousin of mob boss Russell Buffalino, although this has been disputed as some claim the two were not actually related and Russell allowed Bill to use his name for credit. There are also other mysterious rumours about William Buffalino, including that he himself was a made guy in the mob, and according to the man himself, he knows of tapes that proved Robert F. Kennedy was having an affair with Marilyn Monroe. What we do know for sure is that Bill Buffalino and Jimmy Hoffa were very close. Bill represented the Teamsters for almost 30 years, and Hoffa himself for nearly 25 years. Buffalino defended the union in seven cases, from which he won five, and he was also a Teamsters official himself, serving as president of local 985 for 20 years. In The Irishman, we see clearly that Buffalino and Hoffa worked closely with each other to keep the Teamsters president out of jail. When Hoffa is eventually sent to prison, Buffalino is shown to visit him and take instructions from the incarcerated president. And when Hoffa is released from prison and he talks to reporters about wanting to take back the union, Buffalino is there by his side. But according to the book I Heard You Paint Houses, which The Irishman is based off, the relationship between the two men did not end as rosy as depicted in The Irishman. In fact, the two actually had a falling out, according to the mob hitman Frank Sheeran. Sheeran would sit with Hoffa and Buffalino sometimes in prison, as the two would converse about getting Hoffa out as soon as possible. Their main hope rested on getting the man who testified against Hoffa in a jury tampering scandal, Edward Partin, to reverse his statement. Hoffa was becoming increasingly frustrated in prison. Sheeran says that he believes Hoffa hated prison more than anything else in his life, including Bobby Kennedy even. One of the reasons was that control of the Teamsters Union was being taken away from Hoffa, as his second-in-command, Frank Fritzsimmons, had betrayed him and had taken over the union whilst Hoffa was in prison. Perhaps it was this frustration which caused Hoffa to regularly lash out at his attorneys. Either way, Buffalino became fed up with constantly being given a hard time, as Sheeran recalls, and one day, during a grilling during lunch, Buffalino was heard saying, No, I'm not fired, I resign. And he got up and walked out of the prison. And Sheeran does not know of any time Buffalino ever returned to the prison to speak to Hoffa again. There may have been more to this falling out than Buffalino simply becoming irate at the abuse he was getting. As Fitzsimmons began cementing himself as the man in charge of the Teamsters, people within the union began picking sides, either Hoffa or Fitz. Frank Sheeran was a Hoffa man all the way through, and he noted how he was often left out hung to dry by Fitz, once even being left in jail for four months when Fitzsimmons could have easily posted bail for Sheeran. Many who were loyal to Hoffa, such as his wife Jo, were removed from their posts, and many crossed over to Fitz's side, even Hoffa's own foster son, Chucky O'Brien. Others included Genovese Capo and Teamsters official Tony Pro, who of course went to Fitzsimmons to have his pension reinstated after Hoffa told him he could do nothing about it, as shown in The Irishman. Whether Bill Buffalino worked for Jimmy Hoffa or not, he was still a lawyer for the Teamsters union. It may have been that Buffalino saw the light and knew that Hoffa's glory days were over and everyone was going over to Fitz, and he joined them. Either way, Buffalino was firmly in Fritzsimmons' camp after the prison incident. In truth, he didn't need Hoffa. He was the president of a local, a Teamsters lawyer, had numerous other business ventures and, most importantly, was close to Russell Buffalino. Slowly but surely, Hoffa saw many of his followers turn away from him whilst he sat in jail, with some loyal followers remaining firm in their support of Hoffa, such as Frank Sheeran. It would prove one of his biggest obstacles when he was released from prison and fought to regain control of his union, and ultimately would be one of his undoings. Thanks for watching.